Okay, ladies. So I said I was going to go live at one. And I meant that. So I'm live, but I have to do my makeup. Like I have to finish my makeup. So I am going to do that. Have you guys ever tried this? This Dove deodorizer. I kind of like it. But yeah, I'm getting ready for the day. Um, and I did not want to go live at one o'clock. So <laughs> I'm here. All right. So one of the things that I'm trying that's sort of new um, is this foundation. It's a MAC liquid foundation. It's called Studio Fix Fluid. Um, and it doesn't have a pump, as you can see. It's just like, it comes out like this. And this little thingy. Um, but yeah, this is the one that matches my actual powder foundation. That's the one I used to contour. This one. Um, in, in the shade NC47. So I tried out the liquid and I actually kind of like it. Like it gives me really even coverage. Um, I have not put on my concealer yet. So I'm about to just wet my beauty blender, put my concealer on, set it with some powder. I'm going to set it with this dark golden mineralized skin finish. Hey girl. <laughs> the dark golden mineralized skin finish and then just show you, you know, how that process goes. I'm just getting ready for the day. I do have a video topic that I'm going to discuss. I'm going to be talking about someone from Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> Cause I saw a scene today and I was just like devastated at what I saw, so. Didn't like it at all, okay? She was being a true desperado and like, we're not going for that. So I need for you ladies to like, not follow in her footsteps and you know, be smarter. And I'm just going to point out some things that she absolutely did wrong throughout the entire time. Like even while she was dating him, all right? So um, where was I? Okay, so concealer yeah i was gonna put that on next but i didn't do my eyes yet so i'm about to use this this is actually a maybelline palette so they have like a base and it literally tells you like it gives you instructions on what to do but i'm gonna look up here because this is where my mirror is so i'm putting on the base first and then the second step is the lid. So like the lid color is like this gold looking color here. I don't, it reminds me of, it looks just like my bronzer. So I go on my lid and I like to be able to see a little, so I'm always peeking but I also like go off of how it feels as well because I know my face pretty well. So this is step two and it literally has step two etched inside of the palette, which is cool. I've used it so many times now. I know like what goes on when, but it's still fun to, you know, sort of look at. So this is what it looks like on my lids. I like the pretty gold color and then when I put it on it'll be like blended out this will be interesting girl you have no idea I suck at applying eyeshadow but I need to try yeah literally get you a palette like this that already has the four things in there and it'll give you instructions and this is by Maybelline so you know like it doesn't cost a lot so step three is the crease which is that uh brown looking color the beige looking color right here and I just close my eyes and put that in the crease of my eye. And this is actually a crease brush. 
and I know the angle is like horrible but I'll pick up the camera and you know show you exactly what it looks like at the end so you do that for the crease and then for the edge of your eye I like to use this brush because it just has um this sort of like flat tip looking thing to it and it makes the application so much easier and very flawless as well and then all in all it blends together so perfectly like it's ridiculous how perfectly it blends i love it see that perfect so then like if you need to blend it out a little bit more you can go along the edges here and just make sure that your powder doesn't look like it's just sitting on your face um that's what i like to do but just blend it out a little all right so that is it for my eyeshadows and i am done with this particular bag i like to like put my stuff up as i go so that i don't have so much sitting out but that's just me. All right, so now I'm going to wet my beauty blender. And as you guys can see, I have on some lounge clothes, like crop top, yoga pants. I would never leave my house with this on, so understand I've been here all day, okay? Never leave my house with this on. All right, so I am using this LA Colors Conceal It. Um, my favorite concealer is actually by Bobbi Brown, but you just don't get a lot in the little um, container that you have. And so I don't like that because it doesn't give me enough coverage and I use a lot of concealer. So I just apply a little bit to the tip of this and then I also go here. So this is a technique I got from YouTube, but she literally did like triangles on her face. So she went down and did that there. And then she goes to the other side and I do it like this so it won't like splatter on my face cause I'm good for making messes when I do makeup. And that's why I clean up as I go. So yeah, she literally did these triangles. So you go under these zones underneath your eye. And then the last part she did was here on the chin. All right, so I'm about to go ahead and blend this out. And then I'm going to set it with my mineralized skin finish powder. I'm gonna use the rest of this. It's literally almost gone, but I went to MAC yesterday and bought more. So, so glad I did because literally I would have been devastated. Like I don't like running out of anything, but especially not my makeup. Like. I don't know if you ladies have ever had that experience where you want to use something and you run out or you're doing your makeup and you actually run completely out. Like that is one of the worst feelings ever. So I try not to run out of anything, not even toilet paper. I buy tissue, bounty paper towels, everything in bulk. Except food. A lot of the foods that you buy, I know especially like if you're buying fresh fruits and vegetables you can't buy things in bulk unless you're going to freeze it um and i don't know if you have that kind of patience you know go for it but i do not however so you i typically look up when i'm doing this part on my under eye and same thing with the other side um and then i go in between my brows just to make them more defined and you'll see why i do that later um, but it just helps it blend way better. So I put that all over my face. And another thing, I know I told you on my story last night about this new fix it that I started using. It's actually mattifying. But I absolutely love it. Makeup always looks so weird when you're doing it. But then like after you're done, it looks so perfect. All right, LOL, it is toiletries on deck, period. Even soap, like you just have to have things in bulk, literally. 
So that is it for the concealer. So as you can see, I literally have it all over. And then I take this brush. I actually got this brush from Amazon. They have some really cool stuff on Amazon for makeup. So yeah, I'm just gonna use the rest of this. It's literally almost gone, like two taps left and it'll be over. So I start off here with that under eye and I do that part first because you know you can have that creasing underneath your under eye. So you want to set that as quick as possible. And that's how I do that. So after the under eye, I just go, of course, in this little T-zone and blend out everything near my brows. And then I get the rest of my face. So let me go ahead and toss this, open the new one. But this mineralized skin finish is so perfect. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about after I finish applying it. But literally, it's just so like light and perfect. Like, and when I say light, I mean light on the skin. Like, it just feels like, you know, little angel kisses on your face. <laughs> I love it. Not heavy. No one likes heavy makeup unless you're in showbiz. And I am not in showbiz, okay? So I blend it all the way out to the sides, like near my ear. Um, and once I take off the scarf for my edges, I will also blend it out a little more there. And then I normally go in with this darker, this is actually NC45, but I'll go in with this color and just contour slightly with my cheeks. Hey, Puno Harvest. Mm -hmm. And doing this with your lips, <laughs> making that fish face gives you that perfect line like you know that's perfect and then you blend it out accordingly and you know what today I think I'm going to contour my nose as well just for dramatic effect <laughs> yes I like it too girl so just those two areas and then I'll blend it out with my brush, of course. So then I like to go ahead and put on my bronzer. So I have two different bronzers. I'm going to use this darker one today, but this is by Bobbi Brown in uh, Bronze Glow. It's like this really light golden looking color. I love it. I think it's pretty. Um, this is like my date night go-to. But when it's just moi, I love this really like bronze looking color by LA Colors. It just reminds me of royalty. Um, but this is much darker. So this is more bronze and that is like a, it's called bronze glow, but it looks really gold to me. So I just put a little bit on my collarbone to make that stand out more and then i take this i love this brush because it has that little tip and this is from the berkeley set of brushes as well that i got from amazon but i just take that and go straight down my nose and then i put a little here along my lip line and then i hit the cheeks babe because that is like one of the most important parts of your face. All right. So this is what it looks like before it's blended. Okay. So then I take a brush like this. Um, I got these from my mom. I don't remember exactly where she got these from, but I really like these brushes. And um, I have a few brushes from 
MAC as well, but I don't really have a particular place. Like some people have favorite brushes. I don't like, I just use what works. I use the beauty blenders that works. I would not recommend getting like cheap beauty blenders though. That is not a good look, but brushes that don't cost as much and don't shed either. I don't mind those. So I just sort of go in and blend it out just so those lines are not as defined on both sides. And I also blend out the glow slightly just so it won't be so like powdery. You don't really want to make it look like it's powder sitting on your face, right? So that is that. Mm-hmm, sexy, sexy. All right. So then I can take a smaller brush and blend out my nose area here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, girl. There we go. Perfect. Yes, honey, looks great. Thanks, babe. So the last thing I need to do is my lips. And I'll show you how that goes in a second. I'm not exactly sure what color I want to use right now. But by the time I run to get my bag and come back, I will know for a fact, okay? So now I'm just blending out near my edges because of course I had on my scarf. So I'm just going to blend that out there. Mm -hmm. And my purse is actually in my room, so I'll be right back. bring the whole thing in here um so this is where I keep more of my lip stuff I also keep a brush in my bag just because while I'm on the go I want to be able to touch things up but this is a MAC lip pencil it's called Night Moth and I just go like this around the edges and it does not have to be perfect but you should take your time like don't intentionally make the line messy you want it to outline your lips properly all right and let me see from here I'm going to use this mac red called ruby woo it's one of my faves and same technique i go from the middle to the edge and then lift and then same thing on the other side okay Ooh. And then to make this part a little bit more defined in the middle, I can go back through with my bronzer and hit the lip one more time. See that? I love it. Alrighty. So that's what that looks like. I can put this back in here. I actually have two Ruby Woos. One I keep in my bathroom. 
in here. I have a lot of MAC lipsticks. Um, but one I keep in here and the other one I always carry with me. Love, is this daily look makeup? So should I wear makeup every day? This is basically a daily look for me. I don't always put on lipstick. That's one thing that I may not always do, but I will still like line my lips, put on a gloss. Um, but I definitely recommend wearing makeup every day, except to the gym. That is skin suicide. And you know, I have a natural skincare line. So skin is what I study. Skin is what I do. Make sure that you're using a cleanser when you remove your makeup. Um, use makeup wipes, but take good care of your skin, even with makeup. And hey, Tamika, I didn't see you creep in here, girl. So that is that. So that is my look for the day. These edges are still wet. I was using this edge brush. They're not gonna be perfect, I don't care. But I wanna make them look decent, you know? Cause as you can see, my hair, it's just curling right on up. It just doesn't have any respect for me and it has a mind of its own like who told you to do that i put the scarf on for a reason ma'am all right get it together all right so let me put this away and then wash my hands so i'm not transferring makeup to other surfaces away my body butter the body butter I'm using for today was of course the brand new pumpkin spice latte body butter from Queen Care Cosmetics that is the go-to but yeah I like to clean up my bathroom every day some people are like oh I just don't have time but no because I need it to be clean next time I come back in here and do what I have to do so I clean my bathroom every day. So this is the Fix Plus Prep and Prime by MAC. Um, some people put this on before their makeup. Some people put it on after, but it is a primer and like setting spray. So she said to shake it because it has powder at the bottom. Um, the one that I have, as you can see, almost gone, but this is the original Fix It and I really like it. So I wanted to try Fix Plus MAC and try the mattifying look. So when you spray it on, you just want to make sure that it dries properly. But And they never really spray this much, but I'm extra. But I really like this stuff. Um, I just think it looks good. And it really does give me this mattifying look, you know? I just, I really like it. I tried it yesterday, literally in the parking lot after I bought it. I just sat in the mall parking lot and used the spray and touched up my makeup with the powder. So BRB, we're about to go downstairs. I'm gonna hang up my towel so that it dries. And then we're gonna get on this topic, babe, because this topic is everything and more, okay? Like this is gonna be intriguing. And this is the same um, pumpkin spice latte body butter. This stuff smells so good, but it's just in a mini size, so. Not a different body butter, just a different size. Yes, look at these hands, babe. Just get into them, okay? Hands always soft and luxurious. I told you ladies, that is the key, okay? Men do look at your hands all the time, believe it or not, all the time. They watch your hands. They want to see if your fingernails are dirty, if you keep them up. And they know how they can treat you. They know if they can ask you to go get that heavy A box out of the car because you don't care. You lift bricks for a living. At least that's what your hands say. All right, so... I'm super excited about this topic because, oh my gosh, like I didn't even put on mascara. Yeah, let, let, let me do that really fast. I'm just gonna, I don't wanna just skip right past that. Lord, it's dark. 
Let me put that on first, you guys. Where's the link for the body butter? I got you. I'm going to send that to you. It is queencarecosmetics.com. But yeah, I got you. Okay, so which bag? Yeah, it's in the bag for my eye stuff. So that'll be important to share with you ladies too. Um, this is my favorite mascara. I have two of these as well. Where's the other one? There it goes. So yeah, it's by Chanel. It's Chanel Noir. Noir, of course, means black in French. But just look at the way this is shaped. Do you see like all of those little ridges? Like I thought all mascara was created equally because when I first started wearing mascara in general, like even before I started really wearing makeup like that, I used to use Maybelline, like the volume lash. And I mean, it was cool. Sometimes it would have clumps and things of that nature, but it wasn't anything dramatic and it really did have a um, anti like water effect. So it would be waterproof and I just thought it was cool. Lord, I touched my eye. Okay, so I just thought it was cool. But then once I started using more expensive mascaras, I'm like, yo, I'll never use Maybelline again. And this is one of the areas that I tell you ladies to invest in. If you've looked at my video on YouTube about expensive versus worth it, some things may seem expensive. Like people are like, oh, I'm not going to pay that much money for mascara because low key, this Chanel mascara is like $32. But, you know, put it on your Christmas list if it's that deep to you, you know. So I'm going to wash my hands again because that's just what I like to do. And then I'm going to put on some body butter again. All right, BRB. So, yeah. <laughs> Looks better. And my lashes are pretty long. Um, but you can still, like, if you want to wear falsies every day, do that. I need to order some more. Um, definitely want to order some this week, too, because I have another date coming up, you ladies. So, I'll keep you updated on that. But, yeah, so invest in in good makeup um i don't wear cheap makeup if anything like i showed you the la colors like bronzer or whatever you can use stuff like that if it works and it looks good wear it you know don't ever feel like you can't wear something that works for you but i would never just wear cheap makeup just because you know like my foundation my mascara my eyeshadows all of that stuff. I like Juvia's Place. Like you want to use things that are worth something. And it makes you feel good. Like when I spend money, I literally don't feel bad. Why? Several things. Number one, I do have multiple sources of income. And the other reason is because I'm investing in me. I'm not just buying things just to buy it. Like when I wear makeup, this is so I can look pretty. Now you guys can see what the makeup really looks like. Isn't that sexy? I love it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. They are, magnetic ones are great. I've always wanted to try magnetic lashes. I never have, but I definitely will. Hey, um, goalie six, they are, I have a set, really need to use it. Yes, girl, thanks, girl. I love this look, and it's very simple. And this can be a date night look as well, like low key. Not my outfit, heck no. <laughs> Definitely dresses and heels at all times, but the makeup, 
definitely very like neutral earth tone type of eyeshadow look it's well blended a nice contour going on with the cheeks not too serious like as you guys know i have like a cheeky face i have nice full cheeks so when you look at me from this view the profile view it makes me appear slimmer in the face and it's just sexy all right so i do have a clip that i'm going to share with you ladies i emailed it to myself um i'm thinking about doing a tab on my website where um i have like discussion topics and so i'm going to allow you ladies to create an account on my website so that you're able to see the discussion topics so um, it'll have a section that says like members only and then um, I'll have it where you have to actually register for an account I have to accept you um, so let me put that discussion topics members only um, it's by acceptance of course so i'll go in i'll accept you and then you'll be able to respond to the topic so i'm doing this video this is going to be posted on the youtube channel and then on the website you'll be able to respond to the discussion topic so that'll be like our private time to commune with one another ask questions and i'll also post the video links that i'm referring to on that page so let me put video links slash articles because i like articles you know college girl type life so articles are it you still have the 50 dollar sessions yes 50 dollars for five sessions um i will definitely honor that for you for sure so um and you already know where to send it to but yeah definitely still honoring that i don't have it posted like formally on the website but if anyone's like oh do you have the five sessions for fifty dollars like yeah i got you i got you because you saw that promotion because you follow me and you're watching right all right so i of course again will share this video with you ladies later i should have it posted by the end of today but um, I was watching some different clips from Love and Hip Hop. And I love watching clips like that because I feel like they just give you so much insight into other women's lives. Um, and like the things that they really go through, the things that they're passionate about. And it's just like, you need to be watching things like that. Because first of all, you have to know that you're not alone. And secondly, you have to know that these are things that anybody can struggle with you know even when the man has money doesn't have money you know in showbiz not in showbiz like people's patterns of behaviors are very similar when it comes to men and women in our relationships so there was a scene with um shay johnson and mama d now if you don't know who mama d is let me grab some water if you don't know who Mama D is, she is Scrappy's mother. Um, Scrappy is a rapper. Well, he used to be a rapper. I'm not sure if he still comes out with music now. But um, he was definitely popping in like 2005, 2006. And he made his way to television. And so he's on this reality show. And his mother... Um, was always in his business like about something right so um there was a scene where mama d says scrappy isn't happy stick with me and you'll get him back and the reason why i want to address this is because just to paint the scenario for you um erica who is his child's mother they had i think his daughter at the time was like 11 years old 10 or 11 so they had a daughter they lived together his mom just did not like Erica. Like Erica was not a pushover. She was not dealing with his mom's antics. You know, his mom always like called her out of her name, always calling her the B word. And you'll definitely see that in the scene as well, where she's discussing like 
she's always disrespecting me and you never defend me and they were just having their issues but Shay was his friend who became his side piece and so he's having sex with her um and among a multitude of other things that i'll get into later on but essentially she was the side piece and when he decided that he wanted to continue to stay with erica and remain in that relationship she had a major problem with it and she had difficulty with letting that situation go okay so his mother picks up shay and says scrappy isn't happy stick with me and you'll get him back and so another thing she said was that Scrappy should be able to see you if he does not genuinely have feelings for you. So his mother's rationale was the reason why my son is avoiding seeing you is because he genuinely like loves and cares about you. And he's afraid that if he continues with keeping you in his space, that you, you know, will spark something in him and make him feel feelings that he doesn't want to feel. now ladies this is something that i've definitely heard before oh well i know he wants to be with me or i know he really does care about me because he does this but then you see other patterns of behavior that tell you otherwise okay he doesn't want to see her because he doesn't want to see her that's what was going on in that scenario okay and just a disclaimer, like these people have gone on, they're, they've moved on with their lives. I don't know what Shay has going on. I'm pretty sure she's still not in a relationship. Wouldn't be surprised. But I know for a fact, Erica Dixon did um, start dating someone new, got married. She has two more children. So she has a set of twins, new relationship. She's happy. And Scrappy actually married Bambi. And they have a son together and they have another baby um, that they just had, a little girl. So they're good now. So I just wanted to give a disclaimer. This is definitely an old scenario. However, when you look at a man's actions, don't ever rationalize it and say something crazy like, oh, he wants to be here or he wants to be around, but he's not because he's hiding from his feelings. And if a man ever tells you that he's lying through his teeth, because a man, even with his pride, even if he may want to shy away from his feelings, if he cares about you that much, he's not going to let up on you so that another man can come and take his spot. Because he wants you. And their competitive nature is always going to outweigh their feelings. Okay? So, Shay said, I feel like he's being forced to do what he doesn't want to do and she said i've been wanting to speak with him about the situation but i'm afraid because i'm afraid of what he's going to say as if erica is holding this man hostage hey lizzie girl as if erica is holding this man hostage no she's not so his mother and his mom is crazy and I, I hate to use the word crazy especially as a social worker because it's a very inappropriate term but for lack of better words okay I think that she definitely has some mental health issues that she needs to address okay however number one he definitely wanted Erica they had a daughter they lived together and I know like bringing children into the mix and living with someone if that doesn't convince you that he wants her, I can understand that because people have sex and have babies and cohabitate all the time, you know, and then go to the next one and do the same thing. But he put a ring on it. They were engaged. So if you think this man went out and selected this beautiful engagement ring for her and proposed to her on national television and continue to be there for his family and completely cut you out of the scenario if you really think that he doesn't want to be there or that she's forcing him to do all this you're delusional and you really need to sit down and have a conversation with yourself about why you refuse to just accept what it is wishing you the best self-love sunday ah.
Thanks, darling. Happy Self Love Sunday to you, too. I've been relaxing all day. So secondly, he told you it was over. So among other things, even if you're like, oh, he's not happy with his other situation. He doesn't want to be there. He complains about her all the time. He um, talks about how she's not affectionate and how she doesn't listen to him. And she's just sort of fed up. I think they need to leave each other alone. Even with all that, he told you that it was over. So even if he's done with her, he's also done with you. He's done with you. He doesn't want you anymore. And when a man literally doesn't want you, there's nothing you can do about that. Like you have to cut ties. You have to be real with yourself because then it pushes you into a realm of, okay, she's crazy. And then on top of that, she had a problem with Erica for what? Why are you so mad at this woman? And she has all of the investment. She has a child. She has over a decade put in with this man. She's been dealing with his BS. You're new to the scenario. And instead of seeing it for what it is and seeing him for who he is, you're just deciding that it must be her. It's her fault. She's creating this chaos. He definitely wants to be right here because that's what he told me. No, ma'am. All right. Next. And this was the most alarming thing for me, but she put things in her name for him. So, oh, this is this is a tough pill to swallow for me. Let me just let me let me have a, a drink. Because this was the part that I hated most of all. So while she's on stage, he's literally publicly embarrassing her, saying that. What they had was a friendship and she's like no we were more than friends we did this and we did that and what i need for you all to understand is that men can have sex with you and it means absolutely nothing that's not how they bond that's how we bond when we care about a man when we see his effort we want to reward him in a way we want to say i'm yours i submit to you that's what sex is literally it's an act of submission it's saying i belong here i belong to you this is what i want right hey ancient enlightened um native oh that's cool ancient enlightened native hello so she was giving of herself right but to a man, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that he's going to stick with you. It doesn't mean he wants you. It literally means that y'all had sex, which is why you have to be mindful of what you're really getting yourself into. Now, looking at the circumstances, she said, OK, well, all of that stuff you have, that spot you live in, why don't you take it out of my name and put it in her name then? And then his mom steps in and she's like, all right, we'll hold up. You know, like you're saying too much. She didn't want her son to be put out there as a bum, essentially. But, you know, let's call a spade a spade. He has a criminal record. I'm pretty sure there's a ton of things that he can't get in his own name. So you got used, baby. He had sex with you. He did have a house in your name. She said the lights were in her name. The water were in her name. And here you are living in a separate home that you're paying for. And he's living in a house that you put your name on. So you're literally helping him stay afloat and get himself together so that he can afford an engagement ring for the mother of his child where he actually wants to be don't play yourself because she played herself he may have been with the antics he may have strung her along but essentially you played yourself you have to look at don't look at what a man is saying i don't look at what comes out of a man's mouth i look at his actions okay you're saying you care about me you love me. You want to be in a relationship with me. I had a man that I was dating a couple weeks ago who said that he wanted to get married. He wanted a wife. He wanted a family. Um, I told him how I like to live. He said he didn't have a problem if I wanted to have a baby, be a stay-at-home mom. 
but he doesn't have the money for a wife. So he has money for dates. He has money to go out and do trivial things. But if I wanted that, I could be with a young man. If you think I'm about to move in with you and have you provide a mediocre life for me, you have another thing coming. If you think I'm about to move in with you and pay anything for myself, you have another thing coming. The only thing I would be willing to negotiate with is my student loans. Like I take full responsibility for those. If a man said, I want to pay those for you and he had the means to, by all means, but my bills, a car payment, a mortgage, um, um, what is that? Car insurance, life insurance, things of that nature. That's for my husband. So in my eyes, you don't even deserve a wife and a family if you can't do all that. And Erica was being provided for. But Shay was not. Shay was doing the providing. So look at what position you're in. A lot of men date women who provide and who give themselves, give all of themselves so that they can be with the woman who they can provide for. He has extra money. You don't require anything. Okay? Next. Again, men are not forced to do anything. So I want you to think about the last time you felt obligated to be with someone. Because this is another thing. He never said that he felt forced to be with this woman. He didn't say that to his mother and he didn't say it to his friend. So she created that in her head. And I know we as women, I've been in this position myself, but sometimes we feel obligated to stay in a relationship with someone, whether it be because we have history, whether it be because the man has done a lot for us, which I've definitely been in that position. Like, I'm like, wow, he's done so much for me. And even though I don't feel like this is where I need to be, I kind of want to stay here. It happens. You know, you think about these things, but with men, it's just not the case. The only time a man feels obligated to be with a woman and feels like he should be there is if he has some sort of investment. So if he did feel obliged to be with his child's mother, it's because they have a baby. He even mentions in the video he wanted to go ahead and seal that family together, finally make them a family because he'd been with this woman for over 10 years on and off. And he didn't solidify that. And he wanted to make sure he had created that for her and for himself, right? So of course he has an investment there, but he has no ties to you. He had sex with you, you've done a lot for him, but what did he do for you? That's how you have to keep in mind men place their value. It's not about what you did for him. And women always say that, I do so much for him. I cook for him, I wash his clothes, I did this, I did that. But what did he do for you, babe? Because if he didn't do anything, he doesn't care. And that's what you need to keep in mind at all times. What is this man doing for me? It's not selfish. It's science. What is he doing for me? If he does not invest in you, he does not care about you, period. Okay? So essentially, and just to close... He wanted Shay to keep hope alive. Yes, he did tell her a bunch of things. He lied to her. But you also lied to yourself. Because even after you saw where he wanted to be and you felt that pain of him going back and forth and treating you like an option, you still didn't give it up. You still didn't stop and say, I deserve better than this. Let me go find a man that wants me. Let me go find a man that doesn't have this other situationship going on. You stayed there and that's your fault, babe. Debt, stress, I am her. Sign stuff in my name too. See? And it happens to the best of us. As a matter of fact, this just brings me to another nugget that I can give you ladies. So... I've definitely been a person to sign my name to something. So the Jeep that I have outside, you know, I love my white Jeep. It's a 2015 Jeep Patriot. I love that car, but I got it when I was in college and I never, like in my head, I've always said, I'm never going to have a car payment while I'm in school because I don't need the stress, right? So I'm with this guy. Um, he did fully provide for me, paid for everything. And I had a car, but he did not have a vehicle. So sometimes I would have to take him to work if he didn't have a ride to work, which I didn't have a problem with because 
my man pays the bill so if he needs to get to job number two and job number three and i have to take him there it is what it is i don't have anything else to do right so that was my mentality at 20 19 20. so taking my boyfriend to work and then he says that he wants to buy a car so i had no idea why these people were asking for my social security number this just tells you how green i was which means naive that's a green is a street term for naive. So that just lets you know how green I was. Didn't really know what I was getting myself into. So sign my name. You know, he's begging me at the dealership. I actually called my mom and my sister and asked them, do you think this is a good idea? Both of them said, heck no, don't do it. I know you. You're probably not going to be with him for much longer. You get irritated easily. Like, do not sign your name to this car. Did it anyway. All right. Before we even left the parking lot, I wanted to drive the new car. I'm like, at least let me drive it off of the lot. Like, you just talked me into signing for this car. And he's like, no, I'm not driving that. Like, he was too good to drive the car that I was driving at the time. Because temporarily, um, since I had gotten in a car accident that year, I was driving a really old car. It was like a 96 Volvo. Very good car. It ran well. Wasn't too loud or anything. But he's just like... I'm not driving that, right? I was like, who does this man think he is? So we get home, um, you know, he rides off into the town in the car, wants to show it off and all these things. Now, I was blessed because, again, he had several jobs. He continued to pay the bills and I didn't have any issues out of it. He paid the bill on time. Um, he kept the insurance up on the car. Both of our names were on the insurance. So now we have two vehicles. It worked. Um, then he gets into an accident with the car. So somehow or another, he was intoxicated driving and he didn't put the car in park and it like rolled back into a fire hydrant. This man gets the insurance money. Mind you, he was like 26. He was young, but in my mind, he's older. So I'm just thinking, wow, he's so mature. And no, he was not. Let's the car roll back into a fire hydrant. So it has a dent on the back that he did not get fixed. He actually used the insurance money and spent it on me. Did I complain? No, because I'm young. You still see how the thinking was working. So he's still paying it. Eventually we did break up. I think we got the car in October, 2015. Um, in February of 2016, we broke up. That's when I was like, okay, I'm done with this relationship. I don't want to be with you anymore. It's time for you to go cut ties. Um, he wanted the rent that he paid that month back. I was like, no, any money that you gave me is mine. Um, what else did he ask for? He was stalking me. That was another thing. And because he kept stalking me and I had to get a protective order and he kept violating the protective order, he got arrested. So instead of me being like, you know, I'm just going to let him keep the car because that was my initial thought. I'm like, you can keep the car. I don't care. I know my name is on it. If you happen to ruin my credit at some point, that's my fault. Like, I'll just have to take it on the nose. Once it hits my credit report, I'll pay it off. Like, I didn't care. I just wanted to be done with him and done with the situation as a whole because he just wasn't a good father to his children. And he had been lying to me the entire time, making it seem like it was his child's mother's keeping him away from his child. And it was just drama. Like, I hated it. So once all of that came out, I'm like, no way in heck I'm going to be with a man who is not a good father because I want to be married and have a child and I'm not marrying you. So that was the big conversation. Like, I'm not marrying you. And because of that, I don't feel the need for us to move forward. All right. So fast forward, he keeps getting arrested. So I'm like, you know what? If he keeps going to jail, he can't make money. How are you going to be at work and you're getting arrested every two weeks for violating a protective order? Like it, no way possible. So the last time the officer came to pick him up, I asked for the key. The officer did give it to me. Um, and he's like, I'm really not supposed to take the key away from him, but because your name is on it, it's cool. So I got the key. When I unlocked the door, the second key just happened to be in the car. So when I say I lucked up, so there was no way possible he could get the car back. Um, also, 
the car was in my name so it wasn't like he could do anything on in that aspect and when we went back to court for the protective order i asked for custody of the car and there was nothing he could do so i still have the car his name is still on it and then i was stuck with this 400 hundred dollar car payment but now i have a brand new car i can give my grandfather his car back because my parents like my family they've always um bought my cars and like made sure i always had something to drive if there's something wrong with my car like let's say on a friday i'm like oh my god my car just cut off like it's not working they're gonna come saturday bring me a new car have that one towed and i'm good like real life spoiled privileged i love my life okay but with him it was like i don't know it's like he wanted to be able to give me the life that i was accustomed to but he just wasn't he didn't have the same principles that i grew up with so for me it was like how can i be with a man who doesn't take care of his children and who isn't responsible when my father took good care of us and like what if my dad wasn't there like what kind of life would i have had you know that's how i was thinking like trying to put myself in the position of his kid so it was a lot of drama but essentially i still have the car so i was so blessed that although i put my name on this vehicle i ended up with the car and i won and that same ex-boyfriend actually sent me money so i could buy this bag so two men sent me money to buy the same bag <laughs> i love him but we're not together and we don't talk often don't follow my footsteps hey super sid <laughs> but yeah so he was a good guy i'm not gonna lie but he just he was very misguided and obviously at 26 a lot of men don't know how to be fathers um so i don't i'm not judging him off that i just knew like that wasn't for me so i got the heck out of dodge 100 you speak in truth morals and principles period period and at 20 I was just so smart like wait actually by the time we broke up I was 21 I turned 21 that September so I was 21 when we broke up but um that was the year that I graduated from undergrad that was the year that I finally broke it off with him um that was the year that I really like my eyes were opened up because I just didn't see who he was and he treated me so good like when these women are like men treat me so well like i can't imagine him not treating his children well or like i didn't even know he had kids like that stuff is real it's men out here who care nothing about their children and they will put a woman up on a pedestal so when you when now when i see ch mothers like oh yeah he don't do s for his kids but he's buying this b this and that and like he was like taking me shopping he would get my hair done he paid all the bills like he would clean up this man he didn't just work like he would work he would clean up he took me out on dates like i was living life when i would invite friends over you guys know i love to host events when i would invite friends over for different events it says one minute and 53 seconds remaining what is that supposed to mean i guess this is going to cut off what is this all right, so I didn't know they had a time limit up here. But since they do, I'm going to go. So I will post this video to the YouTube channel. I'll download it. Hopefully, it'll let me. I don't know what's going on with IG. He treat his mom bad. That was a sign. I didn't care about the shopping money. Respect for me. Hurry. Right. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and post this on um that channel but yeah my boyfriend he actually didn't even treat his mom bad he treated his mom good it was weird like it was so weird i promise you that was the strangest dynamic ever i don't understand him to this day but i just know he's not the man for me so when you recognize that a man is not the man for you excuse yourself babe don't linger don't stay don't wait all right if you need to book with me my cash app is the dollar sign one six which is 16 love um on cash app it will pop up it will say love watley so if you see love watley send it to me i got you book your consultation i love you so much i don't know what's going on but i'll see you in my next video <laughs> have a good day happy self-love sunday